Hello, I'm Dr. Abhishek, consultant at Ogham Hospital, Bangalore. We are going to discuss stable approach for pre-transport stabilization. I think we have already learned about basics of transport system. Now we are going to see how to stabilize a newborn prior to transport. So next couple of minutes, we are going to learn about pre-transport stabilization through stable approach with a case-based approach. And we are also going to learn about care during transport. The common case scenarios I have placed, a 35-weeker, 2kg newborn, had respiratory distress soon after birth and was referred to our center. This center was almost 10 kilometers away. Parents bought this newborn in their own car as it was an emergency. Whenever we are faced with a problem, it's better to go through an algorithmic approach. It does evaluate, identify, and intervene. So we are going to evaluate at admission this newborn had a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, heart rate of 102 per minute, respiratory rate of 70 per minute, saturation of 85%, capillary refill time was three seconds, and blood sugar was 35 mg per deciliter. Once we have evaluated a problem, the problems I think most of you would have identified that is, newborn has hypothermia, tachypnea, respiratory failure, and hypoglycemia. So most of you would be good at managing this as well. You would have rewarmed under the radiant warmer, started on oxygen, established a IV axis, and given 10 D bolus. So do you think transport could have been better? Should we have stabilized and then shifted? Or do some of you think baby get baby got destabilized during transport? I think the answer is yes, we should have stabilized and then shifted. Car is not a safe modality to transport a newborn who had respiratory distress. Possibly baby got destabilized during transport. We all know goal of all neonatal transport is to transport a well-stabilized infant. Transport is stressful and challenging because we can have challenges with respect to the setup or the baby. With respect to setup, setup may be new for us or the infrastructure may be inadequate. There may not be working warmers, there may not be working suction points. So these are some of the examples. With respect to baby, baby can have different level of sickness. Baby can throw a fit, baby can have hypothermia, baby can have severe respiratory distress requiring intubation. So trans transport, of course, is stressful and challenging for anybody. I think we are all aware of this picture. So here you can see Lord Krishna who was born, was transported by his father all the way from jail to Yashoda. So you can see if you have stabilized the newborn prior to transport, so whatever challenges you encounter during the transport, like rain, water, or a difficult transport course, we'll be able to manage. So it's essential to stabilize prior to transport because we have challenges even during transport. During neonatal transport, we can have several challenges. It can be hypothermia, there can be respiratory distress, shock, low sugars, or challenges with infection prevention. These challenges will reflect on baby's outcomes in the form of newborn may require hiking of respiratory support at arrival. If it's a baby on oxygen, may require a ventilator. A baby with normal sugar may require hike of glucose infusion. Because of hypothermia, baby may end up with bleeding manifestations. There can be risk of new infections and this can very well affect the survival and increase the cost of stay. So hence, we need to stabilize these challenges to prevent these outcomes. So stable is one of the model to achieve this goal. You must be wondering, what is this a new mnemonic has come in? So mnemonics in stressful situation can enhance learning, recall, and make us organize better to handle the stressful situation better. Mnemonic stable stands for 
Yes stands for sugar and safe care. E for, stands for temperature. R for airway stabilization. B for blood pressure. L for lab work. And E for emotional support. Let's go through one by one. So S for safe care. Always if possible, in neutral transfer is the safest transfer, especially for preterm neonates. But in neutral transfer is not possible. We need to anticipate, recognize the problems and manage. And in our case, we had a 35 week 2 kg. If someone would have anticipated the risk of hypothermia, respiratory distress, they would, they would have called the high risk team prior to delivery itself. Motor infant is, infant per se is vulnerable and there is high risk of errors because we have complexities in terms of technology, different medications requirement, different treatments and different procedure requirement. So remember, if possible, in neutral transfer, if not anticipate the problem, then we can manage better. How can we reduce errors? This is one of the crisis resource management algorithm which says whenever you encounter a complex situation, call for help early, anticipate and plan, know the environment, use all available information, Allocate attention wisely, mobilize resources, use cognitive aids in form of NRP algorithm or the protocols, communicate effectively, distribute the workload, establish role clarity, designate leadership. So in our case, let's assume if the baby was transported by us, we would have called for help early. That is, we would have made a team of two people, anticipated the risk of hypothermia, respiratory distress, carried the CPAP equipment and pre on the incubator. So we'll know the environment once we reach the nursing home, use all available information like history of antenatal steroids, risk of infection in the mother, allocate attention wisely. That is one person can take care of airway, other person can manage temperature as well as the circulation. Mobilize resources and use cognitive aids. I think stable is one of the mnemonic communicate during transport, distribute the workload and bring back the child. So with these simulated scenarios, I think with simulation, I think most of the units must be practicing simulation to enhance performance. With these simulations, we can improve performance during complex situations like transport and debriefing following transport will also help. Debriefing is not a new terminology. Debriefing basically is once you finish a complex procedure, you learn from the team what went correctly, what did not go according to the plan. So once we discuss with the team, so with each complex situations, we become better and reduce errors. Moving to the sub part of S, S is basically sugar. We all know which all newborns are at risk of hypoglycemia. Starting from preterms to small for gestation to large for gestation, infants of diabetic mothers, Certain other sick neonates like birth asphyxia, shock, seizures, and medications given to pregnant women. So in general, if infant is sick, avoid enteral feeding, establish intravenous line for glucose solutions, and maintain sugar targets, preferably more than 50 milligram per deciliter. So assess safe and maintain sugars. For sugar stabilization, check the sugar. If sugar is low, give 10% dextrose IV bolus and start glucose infusion. If sugar is normal, if baby is sick, better to start IV fluids prior to transport. Coming to the next part, the T is for temperature. Infants at highest risk for hypothermia are preterms or low birth weight infants, small for gestational age neonates, infants who require prolonged resuscitation, sick or surgical babies, infants with decreased activity. So these infants are at highest risk for hypothermia. In general, any newborn would be at highest risk for hypothermia, depending upon the environment. I think this is a basic figure which most of us would recollect. So babies would lose heat to the surface through conduction, would lose heat loss through air currents, that is by convection. And there is evaporation of water through evaporation and there is transfer of heat to the colder objects nearby through radiation. We have to prevent all these four different types of heat loss, then 
we need to have pre-warm the transport incubator to 36.5 to prevent conductive heat loss. Ensure baby's euthermic at the referral hospital. That is, prior to transport, ensure baby's temperature reaches 36.5. Wrap it with adequate clothing. That is, at least uh, one or two layers of cloth. Do not remember. Forget to use a head cap as newborns have. Newborns lose predominant heat through head as head is the largest surface area. And once you have stabilized and wrapped the newborn, you can transport it in a transport incubator or you can use an embrace if there is no incubator in resource limited settings. So prevention is more important for hypothermia. So once you stabilize sugar and temperature, then you would look at stabilizing airway prior to transport. Assess for any secretions and clear them. Ensure neutral position of neck. If there is respiratory distress or if saturation is low, start oxygen. If baby requires ventilation, start CPAP or invasive ventilation. So remember, laryngeal mask airway can be considered safely even during transport for children beyond 34 weeks or 2 kg. And laryngeal mask airway is not a complex procedure. Even nurses can easily manage with a laryngeal mask airway. Often, safe sugar, temperature and airway. Next is blood pressure. So shock is one of the dreaded complications. So we need to stabilize circulation before transport. Assess heart rate, capillary refill time, blood pressure. And if information of urine output is available, you can record. Once you have assessed, assess the need for fluid bonus. Once the dopamine in 10% dextrose, if baby is in shock, Stabilize, always stabilize perfusion before moving the baby to ambulance. The lab work, lab work depends upon the sickness level of the child. At least try to do basic blood sugar through a glucometer. If there is facility, try getting acid-based status assessed by a blood gas machine. Assess for infection with the reports already done in the referral hospital, like complete blood counts. C reactive protein, blood culture, electrolytes, chest x ray or imaging. Also, try to record the drugs which have already been received to avoid repetition of drugs after transport. The most important and the neglected portion is the emotions of parents. Parents experience different emotions whenever a newborn is asked for transport. As infant is sick or premature, they may have different feelings of guilt, anger, disbelief, a sense of failure on their part, powerlessness, fear, blame, and depression. Whenever possible, provide support and assistance to help the family cope up with this crisis and their grief. So let's come back to our case. So this we know this newborn was bought in a car. Let's imagine we got a call. Transport team was activated. Equipments was checked. Incubator was pre-warmed in the ambulance. We went to the nursing home. So when we saw this child, we decided to evaluate through stable approach. Yes, for safe care, in utero is not possible. They have called us for transport. We did the sugar. Sugar is 40 mg per deciliter. Temperature 35.6. Airway, there is no secretions. RR is 65 per minute. Blood pressure, color is pink, CRT is 2 seconds, heart rate is normal, RBS is 40. And for E, we just started to speak with parents about their emotions. I think after evaluating, we have identified hypoglycemia, we have identified hypothermia, we have identified tachypnea, normal circulation. So, and parents are apprehensive. How did we intervene? Stepwise approach again. For hypoglycemia, we gave a bolus. Established after establishing IV access and started continuous infusion. We rewarmed the neonate under the radiant warmer prior to transport, we connected oxygen, and we counseled the parents about the nature of illness. So that is all about pre-stabilizing a newborn with stable approach. Remember, going through stable approach, you may not miss any critical thing, and not every portion will be present in individual child. In this case, circulation was normal, rest circulation was normal, rest everything was abnormal. That is all about stable approach.
So after pre-stabilization, we could transfer the baby safely in the transport incubator through the ambulance. Baby reached NICU euthermic, respiratory rate of 52 per minute on oxygen, euglycemic. This was settled by 24 hours. We could actually back refer this newborn by 24 hours of life. So just a few points about care during transport. During transport, ensure euthermia, temperature maintenance with the help of transport incubator, Kangaroo mother care if it's a low birth weight neonic, MBase for low birth weight newborns or wrap in adequately. Ensure open airway, ensure adequate breathing, monitor saturation during transport. You can use oxygen or TP's resuscitator if you do not have a ventilator incubator. Assess color, capillary refill time, blood pressure if available, process circulatory parameters. Do not forget to communicate to NICU about transfer of the child so that things are prepared before arrival of the baby. Thank you.